Mr. Secretary General, General Assembly President Karim, my good friend uh, President Sampaio, thank you so much for taking on this duty. It, I would also like to acknowledge the presence of President Gabuza of Mozambique, President Naya Singbe of Togo, and the First Lady of Rwanda, Jeanette Kagame. I'm glad that they came here. I think it shows how much they care about this and what a profound problem this is. Uh, Secretary General, it's good to be back at the UN. Your predecessor gave me a job working on the tsunami areas, and it's one of the most fun I ever had in my life and very rewarding. So I'm glad to be uh, able to come back. Let me begin by thanking all of you who have been involved in the progress which has been made in the last six years in our common fight against AIDS, TB, and malaria. Much of the promise of the Global Fund has been realized by the donor nations, the WHO, NGOs, and governments and citizens in affected countries. The sector negotiated. But over and over again, we see the overlap between HIV and TB which is, has already been said, the number one killer of people living with HIV. In some nations in Africa, almost three in four people who have tuberculosis also are infected with HIV. It is the number one killer of, HIV, of AIDS patients now, and it no longer makes any sense for us to be asking any people anywhere in the world, but especially in the most severely affected countries to pursue two different opportunities to find out whether they're infected with two different diseases, to see two different doctors or medical workers go to two different pharmacies, have two different strategies. Uh, some progress has been made here. There are now 30 times as many uh, people with TB being tested for HIV as there were in 2002. That's the good news, and for all of you who've been involved in that, I'm grateful. But we have to do a better job of fighting the two diseases with one approach, designing our work around the realities of the patients that are treated. That means, among other things, that a protocol for AIDS testing and treatment should factor in TB diagnosis, prevention, and DOTS, and national TB plans should include comprehensive HIV services. My foundation's AIDS initiative has tried to take all this to heart. Our partnerships with 22 different nations in Africa, Asia, and the Caribbean have been built around HIV care and treatment and supporting the development of systematic health approaches. So that in more than a dozen countries, we're working to build up human resources. In Ethiopia, to recruit hospital managers, Malawi, lab technicians. In China, training doctors in Kenya helping to hire nurses, in Rwanda and Malawi building or rebuilding hospitals and clinics, training community health workers. In every case, our people now look at TB needs side by side with AIDS. In eight nations, we're working on models for rural health care from the district level in Tanzania to the national scope in Lesotho, always involving comprehensive care, including HIV and TB. In Liberia, our project is called Basic Package of Health Services. It is now no longer possible for someone to work there and just deal with one problem and not the other. That's what the government of Liberia has decided to do. Of course, there's a lot more we can do, and I'd like to just point out some of the problems that we confront, particularly given our resource limitations, because normally we go into countries because we're asked to help with AIDS, and then we wind up training people and trying to build out health systems from that. But treatment for multi-drug resistant TB is now very expensive, as you all know. Treatment for extremely drug resistant TB is, for all practical purposes, completely unavailable in the countries that need it most. And we only have a few good diagnostic technologies. 